My name is James Flaherty. We are farming here in Kilmory, Cordell, Castle Island. We are second year into our dairying in enterprise here. We switched from suckler to uh, dairying in 2021. We fitted a robot in January 2021. We've been milking up to 80 cows since on a split calving from autumn. We brought in uh, 15 to 20 and then the rest in us all uh, spring calving. Our second year with multi-species swords, we set uh, about three acres of it last year, just dipping our toe into it. And uh, it was a bit later in the year that we went reseeding, so I only managed to get two or three grazings off of it. And uh, But no, we managed to get into it earlier this year, and they're now in their third rotation inside in it. We put it into the A block, because with the robot we're on A, B and C, so they're getting eight hours on the multi-species and then 16 hours on grass. I know it's, it's, it's working well. I'm absolutely blown away by the clean outs I was getting it at the very start. And even now, you'll see that it's, uh, I'm, I am delighted with the clean outs that are there as well. I was looking for something different. Maybe the fact that we just jumped into a whole load of new technology. And I said, look, my, uh, one paddock of multi-species water didn't exactly want to save the world, but it's to cut down our nitrogen usage as well. And uh, look, you would be a bit sceptical to see how it is going to work, but Jesus, so far so good. We put in another six acres of it, and hopefully next year now, when I'd be going to the sea block to do a bit more receding above there, I'll put in another maybe six, eight acres of it. We'll, we'll just see, see how it goes. So my name is Thomas Maloney, I'm the product manager with DLF Seeds and DLF are a seed wholesaler based in, in County Waterford um, and I suppose my job as product manager is I'm, I'm kind of in charge of bringing new varieties of grass, uh, mainly perennial ryegrass through to the market um, and also on, on any new uh, technologies or, or new mixtures so things like uh, involving white clover, red clover are very topical these days and obviously uh, multi-species which was my specialist subject I would have done my PhD with Chagas um, a couple of years ago looking at multi-species for, for silage production and um, so I suppose that's how, how I brought my expertise to, to my role here at DLF. So the uptake of multi-species swords in the last two years or two to three years in particular has been, been really really good and, and pleasantly surprising I suppose from, from my side uh, as a concept. Um, I guess farmers are, are listening to a lot of the stuff in the media and they want to continue farming in the most productive way they can but they are trying to lessen their impact on the environment all, all the time. So what we're seeing, I suppose, is farmers starting off with a little bit and maybe going five or six acres at a time, maybe every season, just to, to try and expand um, on the amount that they have on their farm and just to get the, the most impact out of it. So this is one of the, the biggest the biggest attractions to, to use a multi-species swords is to reduce the nitrogen. And that obviously has the direct effect of using less nitrogen and saving more money on that. But it also helps from, from kind of the environmental side, a more, a more holistic way um, in terms of your soil quality. And by not applying all that chemical nutrient onto the, onto the soil, you're allowing the bacteria and the fungi that are in the soil carrying out all these processes naturally anyway, you're allowing those to, to thrive and to flourish. And you're letting the natural processes do the heavy lifting rather than just using the, the shortcut and, and applying lots of fertilizer. So what we're standing in here, I suppose, is uh, DLF six species herbal lay, and I guess the vast majority of the multi-species swords that have been sown in Ireland uh, are based on the six species. And those six species, I suppose, are perennial ryegrass, timothy, um, red and white clover, ribwort, plantain, and chicory. A lot of the, the research trials that would have been done in Ireland and, and elsewhere is based roughly on, on at least those six species, maybe a couple of others, but the six in here are probably the best in their class in terms of agronomic performance, in terms of quality, production, and suitability to, to our climate as well. That's why most of the mixtures are based on, on the six species here. They were saying, oh, it needs to go in lighter and it needs to go in this. I put it in that bit lighter and look, no, the grass is there. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine, it's coming on. I put in at 12 kgs per acre. Uh, hindsight, in the other two paddocks, it went in at 16. That's, I'm looking forward to seeing the way that that's possibly come on, that'll come on more vigorous now. And that one you probably won't see much grass. Yeah, because the plantain and chicory will. It'll just be like a field of lettuce. That's in the next two paddocks below because I put it in heavier, four kgs per acre heavier. There's a lot of this is still an art form rather than a science, so the sowing rates 
if you think of the, the mixture, if you saw the mixture in your hand as, as seed, there's obviously a lot of grass in it, but there's a lot of very small seed in it as well. The chicory, plantain, clovers are tiny. So if you imagine you set your machine, you set your drill to 12 kilos as you would, or 13 as you would for grass, you're actually probably putting out multi species slightly heavier, even though the machine is set to, it's coming out of the, the sower quicker that, because the seed is slipping through. So I'd say if you set it to 13 kilos, you're probably near enough, so you're 15 yeah. or you're 16 kilos in, in reality. So the reason that the, the multi-species mixtures are, are, are outperforming or appear to be outperforming the, the grass, the grass uh, swords that we traditionally use is, is I suppose, the, the complementarity that goes on in the mixture and the way that the, each species are, is interacting with each other. So you have different species in here doing different jobs. Obviously, they all look very different. They're all from different families of plants. So you have the likes of your grasses that we all know about. That we know the grass grow curved. They're, they have really good production in the early part of the year. And in a mixture like this, then you can see they're, they're, they're providing a lot of ground cover as well. And then the clover, obviously, which is probably one of the biggest drivers of the engine in the mixture. The clover is the one that's fixing the nitrogen from the atmosphere and it's feeding everything else in the plant. So that, that's the one that allows us to, to back off with our, our, our chemical nitrogen. And then the new ones are the ones that we least less familiar with are the, the herbs and the, the plantain and the chicory. So chicory, in terms of its physiology, it's probably it, it's the most drought tolerant one in the mixture. And that's kind of where the drought tolerant reputation comes from. Is It's mostly from the chicory. It's a summer, a summer plant. It, 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 it's a little bit slower to get, grow, get going in the year in Ireland. It, it's now and from now on that you're really going to see the benefit of the chicory. And um, we might dig some up in a while and we'll see, we'll see the tap root where it gets this drought tolerance. Similar with plantain, it's, it's, it's designed to grow in the summer rather than in the spring. But we're seeing with plantain that it kind of has a steady, steady production all throughout the year. And um, we probably recognize plantain a lot. It's, it's uh, pretty native here. You see it growing on the ditches all year round as well. So it's the complementarity and it's the way that the, the different species are playing off each other that gives you the, the overall improved performance uh, and improved production in the sward compared to if you're just growing one, one, uh, one species or one variety of grass. When I set this last year, um, I think it was in late June, we, we didn't really know what to expect, let's be honest. You know, it was, it was a multi-species sport, we had heard a lot about it. Um, I'd seen it on, you'd see it on the um, videos of, on YouTube and whatnot, like, but every day I came down just to see what was different about it, like, and it was thin when it got to I was trying to treat it like grass thin, but you were seeing like what Thomas said there, a field of lettuce and um, chicory and the plantain were flying it. Uh, clovers were just about appearing dead, dead. So I left it get to trying to measure it cover wise. I was a bit skeptical about it, but when uh, we left them into it, it was at knee height and like we got five grazings out of this five eight hour grazings out of this block which was grass depending on the cover if you went into covers of about maybe 13 1400 you got about four but they were they were happy inside in it you know and they, they did clean it out pretty well um second round i didn't go into it as heavy uh the covers weren't quite as heavy inside in it and still they still were happy inside in it but after that, the water kind of broke and I pulled them off because I was afraid I would do too much harm inside it. But they would hit us at the end of March this past year and they absolutely wiped it out. And that had been there all winter, you know. So I was very happy with it. It, it was interesting the first time to see. We were curious more so to see how they were going to get on because the covers were, they were good enough. Um, up along. So they, when they were coming down here for the eight hour block, it was night time. They were coming down here at two o'clock in the morning and uh, it was interesting to see how they were going to get, get on but no we were very surprised i was delighted actually to be honest and um it was after i think we were halfway through the first to second grazing when you came on <laughs> and we were happy with you know i wanted to get to see how thomas was going to react to it and uh to well, whether i was doing it right or wrong like he got little to no fertilizer he got no fertilizer he got three bags of 10 10 20 to start off with last year after every reseed we'll get and that's all it got and it has got no fertilizer did this year it got uh slurry in january and that's all you know and it's i'm in round number three now just only another eight hour block left in it and 
they're going back into it nearly uh, every 17, 18 days. So I'm very happy with it. The two, I suppose, new things in the in this ward here is, is the herbs and it's the chicory and the plantain. And the chicory is, is this one here, uh, the one that looks a bit more like lettuce. Um, it's got a nice soft leaf on it compared to the plantain. Um, plantain, we might be more familiar with, you see it growing on the side of the road. It's also called rib grass because it has the, the, straight, the ribs down along the leaf. Um, and then this would be the, the flower of the plantain, it's probably seen as well. So there's your plantain and your chicory as well. Um, chicory is the one that sets the big long stems. And these are pretty small, they can, they'll get longer as the summer goes on, but these are the ones that probably set the, the red flags for, for farmers when they see stems like this in, in the field. That's probably not a great, a great sign, but I'm not so sure it's anything to be worried about because you can see they're, they're pretty soft stems. Um, it's kind of like celery. It's not, and when we see the, the grazed out paddock there now, you'll see that most of the stems have, have actually been grazed down. So there's two clovers in this mix as well. <clears throat> this is the red clover, and this was the way to tell red clover is when it's not in flower, it has a, or when it is in flower, it has a red flower. But when it's not in flower, it's, it's slightly different to, to white clover in that it stands up um, a bit more erect. And if you look at the leaves really closely, you'll see hair on the bottom of the leaf. Um, there's white clover in here too somewhere. White clover grows more along the ground and it has the shiny, um, shiny, more waxy looking leaf with no hair on it at all. And then obviously it has a white flower as well. So your white clover is going to creep along through the sward, through the, through the base of the sward. Um, it spreads, it can, it can self-replicate spreads by, by putting out new stolons, kind of like a strawberry plant does. Um, and then the, the red clover is traditionally used for cutting but it's, um, it's a more erect plant. It grows out of one, one growing point, so it grows up from, from a single stem, and it'll stand up tall um, in the sward as we go through the, through the summer. It'll start to stand up, I promise. So this is a baby plantain. Let's see. But you can see how nice and crumbly the soil is, even after less than a year. And the fibrous roots on the plantain, there's a lot of them. They're a bit thicker than than your grass roots, so good for finding nutrients. And this is your chicory, cut the end off it. But you can see, you can get an idea, it's a big fat root, um, and it'll, as, it get, as the plant gets older and develops, it'll, it'll go as far as it needs to go to find water. Um, and it's obviously, maybe you mightn't have as much need to do it down in Kerry, but it has the potential to, to go down deep and find, and find plenty of water. So this is a red clover. You can see the single growing point at the base of it there and there's a few nodules on it a little nodule on the root and there um, there's bacteria in there that are the ones that are actually fixing the nitrogen and the bacteria are given supplying nitrogen to the plant and the plant is giving them carbohydrates so they're both living in harmony with each other uh, in a symbiotic relationship there and you can see they're kind of pink which means they're active if we had a knife if you open them actually the real way to see it is if you cut through the middle of that a nodule there and you look inside it, it's bright pink. So that's the, the guy that's fixing all the food for the, the rest of the, the rest of the sward. So see so a red clover, single growing point, grows up like a tree uh, for cutting and then there's your white clover. You can see already all the branches off that. So he's gonna creep along throughout the sward and you can see the new white clover plants starting to their new white clover plants on the stolen. They'll just keep growing and spreading like a vine through the sward there. They came in here at uh, two o'clock this morning and uh, the last of them left then. The vast majority of them were gone over here for 10 o'clock and the last seven or eight were wa walking up the road there around 11. And this is what we're left with. And I'm delighted, to, you know, it is cleaned up pretty well. Yeah, it's good. And compared to what you were saying earlier on about, you were worried that you had let it go a bit too far and. There's a few stems in there, a few stalks in there that are three or four foot tall and there's not much of them left in here. They've, they've grazed the stems down as far as they can go. They've even eaten the docks, you can see. You can see dock stems down there, the leaves are gone. But um, oh yeah, I'd be happy with that as well, it's good. Less, the wild, less than three weeks, they'll be back in here again, you know. They are cleaning it, they're happy. They've got their eight hours out of it, they're full. Persistence is the biggest question, I suppose, that we get about, about multi-species swords and all. How long will it last? And It's not the whole sword you're going to come out one day and the whole thing will be gone. It's different, different parts, 
different components of the mixture have, have different um, levels of persistence and I guess one of the least persistent parts of it is the chicory and this is probably the main reason, I don't know if you can, you can see that, it, that it's a biannual plant so in a second year it wants to go to seed and sets, it, it sends up the stem and the stem is hollow. So if you can imagine if you top that you're leaving a massive straw uh, into the heart of the plant. If you cut that down to the ground then, then you're giving the water a shortcut into the middle of the plant. And I think there, it's probably safer to leave it the way it is and let the, let the, let the, the leaves grow back. I started off with three acres last year. I have nine now. The first row, the first evening that they came in here, that's where I was watching them. I was like, how are you going to get on inside here? After the first evening, I was happy then. You know, maybe I gave them a little bit too much to start with because you're unsure what they're going to eat, what they're not going to eat. They were happy after that. You know, and that's why I started breaking it down in the same as the paddock. Normally this paddock, if this was in grass now, they get four to five nights inside in it. And they're getting uh, five nights inside in this paddock now and I'm delighted with it. Seems like there's, there is a lot of trial and error, I think, in this and it is new. Uh, and rolling it out on farm or James using it on farm, there is a little bit of, of see how it goes, but there's a lot of like technical research, there's a lot of studies done in Ireland even, and, and especially down in, in New Zealand and across the world, that are showing this stuff coming out on top compared to a grass only sward getting fertilizer and, and even a, a grass white clover sward, which is going to be the new, the new standard in, in, in agriculture here. So there, there's a lot, I suppose it's more, more so the practical side and like what we're talking about here, grazing, pre-grazing, post-grazing, what is the best thing to do? There's a lot of kind of just maybe see how it, that goes ourselves on farm, but the concept and the, the, the value to, to animals, animal performance, the value to um, a lot of the environmental side of things in terms of drought tolerance and, and reduced fertilizer, that's, that's all fairly, fairly well, well studied and, and, and well got. So, um, it's, it's up to us, I suppose, in the next part of the research is the practical side of it and how does it work on farm and how do we best utilise it on, on farms. This snow was, we gave this two runs of the discarrow um, by a local contractor here and he came in then literally straight after it with the power harrow and it just barely, it was barely scratched but the cedar was on the, on the back of it. and. Um, we put this out at about 16 kgs the acre. It's, yeah, no, it was rolled a few days after it because it did rain right after he leaving the field. But that was just the weather that we had. It was just, uh, we just had to go that, that evening. No, we were, we were very happy with it so far. Uh, compared to this, we just gave this one last year, one run with the power harrow and seed at the same time. And it's, look, it's, that's, that's doing exactly what, what we wanted to do for the last year, nearly a year now and uh, it'll be very interesting to see how this turns out.